Welcome to Spiritual Realities Podcast with your host, Dana Emanuel. Have you ever fallen prey to the most successful and cunning card artist ever to live? Ever become fascinated by the paranormal or become involved in the new age, witchcraft, or the occult? Come listen to the testimonials of people who have discovered the deceptions behind these things, have since come out of it all, and have been set free by Jesus. everybody. Welcome to Spiritual Realities Podcast. I have a very interesting guest on today. His name is Eddie Bennett. And Eddie is all the way. Where are you, where are you at right now, Eddie? I'm in Battersea, London, in the UK, yeah. in England. And I'm over here in the US, in Cocoa, Florida. So, <laughs> wow. So we're on the <laughs> other ends of the world, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's a very interesting guest, though, guys. He, he's an ex-UFO cult uh, member. And I will let him talk more about that. But um, I want to go ahead and let Eddie introduce himself and give a little bit of ba his background and how he became involved in this UFO cult. Yeah, sure. Well, basically, I was your average English guy in an average English family, uh, raised in a small town just outside London. And growing up, I... Uh, I sort of took an interest in different things in life and always wondered whether there was a God or whether there isn't and got confused by the different amounts of churches like the Catholic Church, the Church of England Church, this church, that church. There were so many, I got a bit confused with it all and never really, never really studied Christianity in a big way or, by, or pursued faith in God. But as I got older, at teenage years, I took an interest in, in like paranormal magazines things like uh, Mysteries of the Unknown, and I found it fascinating. And they had stories in there about ghosts and the afterlife and things about UFOs and alien visitations and people who had UFO sightings. And I thought it all very fascinating. And I was a great fan of science fiction. I used to love Star Wars and Star Trek. And uh, I used to love the night sky, I used to love the stars and looking up at astronomy and uh, love, love the constellations and uh, love science fiction. And then one day, I think I was about, uh, might have been 19, 20 years old, I saw a television program about about this group of people who, about a person called Rael, who had a, a UFO encounter and the UFO came down and met him in this place in France and uh, had an alien visitation by this person from another planet. And he said he had a message for him for mankind. And I found it fascinating that someone had actually met an alien being from another planet and had a message for mankind. And somehow it logically, probably because I was a bit only like a 19, 20, maybe I was looking for something. And I found it fascinating. I thought, wow, what's this all about? Someone's had a visitation from an alien, has a message for mankind. And because I was into things like the X-Files and Star Trek and Star Wars, I thought, wow, I mean, this could be like a first encounter with aliens from another planet and I heard about their meeting in London I went to their meeting got their book and I was fascinated by it all read their book and that's how it all started wow wow some people can think you know wow how can somebody actually become deceived by these things but you know it seems like yes. they're always yearning for something and like you said you had looked into other like churches the different denominations and I see yes. where a lot of people can and do become confused with that um, so it's not surprising at all, but they, yeah, they always have that yearning for something spiritual, that spiritual side and that information on the unknown. Um, and it, it makes you think though, of like in Genesis three, where it talks about, you know, how they were looking at the tree of knowledge and, yes. you know, they shouldn't do that. And, uh, it just makes you wonder if that's the kind of knowledge that people were seeking then, you know, that they do today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yes. I, I find that very interesting that, you know, to hear that mm -hmm. from you to you as well. So uh, when you got uh, involved with this uh, cult, was it uh, what would, what part of it would you say actually um, attracted you to it the most? Well, I think when I, when I read the book, I went to their meetings, they, they sort of they sort of used the Bible and use it in a deceptive way. 
they made out that that was primitive man could understand there was a God. And now we've reached the age of understanding when instead of believing in a God, that primitive man would believe in, we've now reached an age where we can understand there's life on other planets. And they said, instead of being created by God, we were created by an advanced civilization using DNA to create life on earth. And they use things in the Bible because I wasn't really about biblical knowledge, like as I know a bit more now as a Christian. But before then, I didn't really have the biblical knowledge to realize I was being deceived. And I explained then that the, the Garden of Eden was like a laboratory where they came on Earth, they found Earth as like a life giving planet, a life supporting planet, sorry. And they came here to, to, to do experiments with their DNA in creating life, just like um, with the oh. DNA, people are using DNA today to create life and embryos and things like that. I found it, well, if, if, if these people can do it, maybe we'll do it one day as well. We might create life one day and then go to other planets and create life. And they were saying it's like part of like an eternal cycle and the universe is like an eternal cycle. Yeah. And it goes on for infinity, you know, and it, and it was all very fascinating. And to me, it was just mind awakening. And I didn't realize I was being awakened to lies, deception and the occult. And yes. I got deeply immersed into their, their teachings and their studies. I went to their meetings and it, I just found it so fascinating that, uh, that life could have been created by an alien race of people. And then wow. on Earth, and uh, they were given this. Now we've reached the age of understanding, and I found it all very fascinating. You know. Yes, and you say that they were talking about how they were they could clone people, and um, yes. and and it makes me wonder. They were probably thinking also that they could improve our DNA, like get rid of diseases yes. and things like that. Yes. Wasn't that also part of what they believed? Yes, I, I, they were very interesting in in DNA and. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they, they, I think they, there's even rumours on the internet that they did actually clone a baby. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Yes. And, there, and there's also rumours that they they want to continue in creating life here on Earth, and they, and so they can be like the what they call the Elohim, which they they believe were, the alien race were called Elohim, which is a word for God. And they 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 use that word to describe that they they believe the word means those who came from the sky, and it's all very deceptive, wow. you know, using using biblical terms in the Bible to to go back to like uh, alien examples, mm. things things like the so like things like the angels. Uh, they they said no, these were astronauts from 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 their planet visiting them on the Earth, and. It's all wow. they deceptive. They're all they deceptive teachings in their books. Yes, and at yes. their meetings, you know. Yes. And you said they use scripture. They twisted like some Bible verses and things. Yes, that's right. Things like wow. creation and the Elohim oh, and those wow. who came from the sky, and and they all went through biblical stories in the Bible as well to explain that different different things in the Bible about relating to the aliens from other planets. You know. Yeah, and and uh, um, I can't help but ask. <laughs> What was it that they said that they believed about Jesus? Well, they, they, this is, this is the amazing thing. He actually believed he was the half brother of Jesus. Would you believe? Because they, they, they believed Jesus was just a messenger on earth mm. and that he was sent by the aliens. And he was, I think, uh, I think he was like, I said, so as, as Christians, we believe Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. But they believe they were conceived by one of their leaders on another planet. So he was like a uh, half alien and half human. Oh, and wow. they believe Jesus was a messenger for that time, that, that time period. And that all, all the prophets and all the messages and all the religions were, were, were sent by these aliens for the time, for the people at that time. They had the message for, the, for that, that time. And then Rael, they believe he was also the same father as Jesus from this man from another planet. And he believed he was the half brother of Jesus, so he thought he was a very special person. And he was like the new messenger in this new age, and like the new church, this new age generation. And we've got the new message for mankind. This is like the ultimate truth, and the, 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 the final end of all of all the, the truths and all the, all the religions and all the knowledge. And it's like, and I thought, wow, this is this is mind blowing, and it was so fascinating. I, I didn't realize I was being yeah. deceived. You know, it, was, it just it seemed so logical this, to me that this yes. 
I thought, well, this this is what could have been the truth. I actually thought, well, this is the truth. I really thought it was real. I thought we were created by aliens from another planet, and that we would create life using DNA. Yes. And I really thought this this is the truth. And wow. yes, that's true. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I, I tell you, a lot of people that's come out of things like that. They look back and they they're like, you know, of course, after they do come to Christ. They think, yes. wow, how could I have believed such a thing, you know, I know, I know but yes. I can definitely see where you can get involved in it to where it's not it's not something that instantly you're deceived by. It. It's a gradual thing. You learn yes. from them and yes. you keep learning and you keep uh, meditating and, you yes. know, you get these, you know, downloads and, and the, all this mm. information. And not only that, I think another thing that makes people believe what they're saying is the fact that when they have these experiences, they're so real. So they assume, well, since it's so real, then they must be telling the truth and they must be who they say they are. That's what got me with the ghost. You know, I was involved with uh, ghost hunting and things. Well, I always believed, you know, these experiences I had was so real. And I thought, well, they, they must be who they say they are. You know, we just don't realize though that there's something more sinister behind the scenes and there's a plan, you know, that we have to be aware of, which is why I even do what, you know, these podcasts now is I want to bring awareness Mm. to people that are looking for the truth. Um, I'm sure that if you would have stumbled on a a video like this, you know, years ago, you probably would have been glad. Wow. I want to get involved in that. Wow. You know, we just really got to be able to put the word out there. Um, but yeah. I do find it fascinating that they do talk about Jesus, but they pretty much they don't give him uh, they don't say he's any deity, you know, that he's actually no. God and or that he created everything. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. So yes. They, they say they created him. Right. And, they yes. Created, yes. you know, what was it that brought yes. you to a realization like, oh, no, this isn't this isn't yes. good. Well, I think. Yes, I think I think. Um, well, I got deeply. When I heard about it, they took they sent an invitation to a two week uh, training course in France to go to go deeply into the Raelian teachings, yeah. and also to become a guide where you would like to join the leadership of the uh, of the cult in my country, which is the England in the UK, and become a guide and be a helper in the movement. And I sort of joined up, went up to this uh, course in France. And they had these deep meditation techniques. And at the f- at first, I thought, well, this is fantastic. It's like a very peaceful, relaxing. And they had this hypnotic voice. And uh, you sort of go into a trance. And they also done out-of-body experiences where, and astral projection where you would project your imagination, your mind out of your body. You would float into space. And you would, like, visit these aliens all in your imagination, this, this talking, this meditative talking. Yes. So to prepare your mind for alien life and to prepare the to, to open your mind to the universe and to become one with the universe and to be whole and to open up to these aliens based on the, their beliefs. And the, I've done this the two weeks of meditating. And when, when I got back from uh, France, I felt I was on top of the world. You know, I felt high. I felt super spiritual. I felt like my mind had been advanced. I felt more uh, intelligent. I felt more... I felt like spiritually awakened to this new age and I felt almost felt one with the universe. I felt like one with the flowers, the trees, the stars. And I felt this whole, I felt like I'm whole with everything around me and the surroundings. Like everything was bright and like a a euphoric type of high. Yes. It It was like, I've never taken drugs, but I can imagine it's something, something of taking drugs where you come really high and if you feel fantastic and you, you feel like, Yes. You feel great, you know, and uh, now I remember once so I was doing some meditation at home and uh, I remember my mind, it was like it, like it was advancing. It was like my senses started improving. My visions and colours seemed better. My taste when I ate things tasted better. Smell, smell of flowers smelled better. My hearing yes. for music sounded better. It was like I had, all my senses had been improved. I thought, wow, this is mm. amazing, you know. I yes. felt fitter, stronger, healthier. I thought, wow, this meditation and this uh, these teachings are, are really feel for even more that it was true, you know. And, I can imagine uh, it also became addictive, didn't it? Yes, meditation became addictive. I'd do it two or three times a day. 
wow. and it became part of my life for about a year you know doing these uh, meditation techniques and also i actually had ufo sightings uh, going back when I, when I first read the book of the UFO cult, I remember going up to my window and looking up out into space and I actually saw a flying saucer flying over the rooftops. It was like straight out of a Steven Spielberg movie. And I thought, wow, this is a sign from the, the aliens after reading their book that they're real. This is true, you know. And I thought, oh, and I really got, yeah. really thought it was the truth after seeing a UFO myself. And then months yeah. later in the cult, I saw I had another UFO sighting. I had a I saw two lights on the horizon going towards each other and then zooming up over my roof at the really, really fast, oh, like wow. no, other, no other human aircraft could do. And after seeing these uh, UFO sightings, I thought, wow, this is this is amazing. You know, I thought I really thought that this was the truth. And yes. it's, it's just amazing. How They're very strategic. Out. You notice yes. that? Very strategic. Yes. Yes. That right yes. after you, like you said, I was reading this book, and then they come. Yes. It's just like a confirmation, yeah. and then I they know. go above your house and do this. Yes, it's yes. It's, it's all part of the plan. That's something. Uh, yes. So but, after doing this deep meditation techniques, getting high, and then uh, after a few months of that, suddenly, I can't explain it. But my mind started going in, in on itself. It was like I was getting depressed and depressed. And I, I couldn't concentrate. I tried to pick up a cup of tea and my, my, my mind couldn't work out where the cup was. And I was getting all de delirious and drowsy and dreary. And I wow. I rang the UFO cult leader in this country saying, Look, what's going on? I'm sort of losing my mind. And and uh, suddenly this evil voice came on the telephone. I was, I was really shocked. I thought, well, wow, what's going on here? He said, Eddie, you know what's going to happen to you in a deep, evil voice. And it was, it was so evil. And, and suddenly I, like I entered the Twilight Zone. You see the, the TV show, The Twilight Zone. I'd, what, like Ed, I'd entered. What did he say? Go ahead. He said, Eddie, you know what's going to happen to you. And I oh. hung up the phone because I was so frightened. It was a demonic voice on the phone. It wasn't yeah. the UFO cult leader. But it might have been him with like a demon or something. And yes. it was so frightening. I suddenly entered this, it was like a demonic realm. It was like something, and like an evil realm. And I started mm -hmm. having paranoid delusions. Uh, oh, because you probably thought, thought you was going to be killed or something. Yes, and I, 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 I had thoughts. I had I had really really delusional thoughts. I oh. suddenly my mind just caved in on me, and I started getting paranoid schizophrenic thoughts. And I thought yes. there was snipers outside on roofs trying to shoot me. I had to I had to keep away from windows. I thought there was people outside with baseball bats that were going to beat me up. And oh, I was just wow. getting all these strange, evil thoughts from all over, all over my mind, and I totally lost my mind. And yes. I was living with my parents, and uh, my mum and dad rang a doctor, and uh, he came round and said, he said uh, he has to go and see a specialist at a psychiatric unit, and they took me there, and I saw this psychologist and psychiatrist, and they said it's best he goes to a, a mental hospital, a psychiatric hospital. And oh, they goodness. Took, my, my, my dad took me there and I was on the ward. And as I walked in, uh, uh, I could, there was a people, there was, I had a, a hallucination of those in the UFO culture in this country, the leadership in this country who I'd met. They were sitting in a circle, all with their heads bowed, meditating in a circle. And I thought, what is going on? What are they doing here in the mental hospital? I've just, just come into this. And oh, I went yeah. into the office to meet the the the, uh, the um, head of the uh, the wards, and I've been admitted to the mental hospital. And then when I came out, that all disappeared. And it's like, what is going on? So I'd had, I'd had this paranoid delusions in my brain, I'd had uh, this hallucination, yes. and I really wondered what was going on. I was going, I was going like insane in my head, wondering what was going on with my mind, my, my life. God and I actually your heart. thought that these these uh, these aliens were. It punishing me for something I'd done wrong. I thought these aliens were punishing me. And I, I actually thought, because they mentioned about that they send people to like a, a different planet to be punished. And I, I remember checking the stars that night in the constellations to make sure I was still on Earth. That's how serious yeah. it was. I thought I'd be sent to this wow. planet of like condemnation. And I yes. wondered what, oh, I really wow. wondered what like was Oh, wow. Like it was really on. a hellish experience, really. Yes, it was. It, yeah. it did feel yeah. like hell. It did feel like hell. Yes. And I was having these paranoid delusions, and there was lots of – it was like one flew out of the cuckoo's nest. There's lots of mentally ill people in, in the ward walking yeah. around. And it was really quite a frightening experience being in there. And you know what is really sad? My Eddie and I 
I'm sure you can attest to this. A lot of yeah. times people would say, oh, this is just a mental thing, but it's actually a yeah. spiritual thing. Um, a lot of people yes, in the, the minute, and I'm not saying all of them, there are people that have mental, really mental problems, yes. but oh, there's yes. a lot of yes, them that's yes. being spiritually oppressed. And uh, Very true, it's yes. sad, Very it true. really yes. is. Yes, yes, it is. Anyway, so I was sitting in the mental hospital thinking, what is going on? You know, what am I doing here? And what's happened? Why is my mind like this? Why am I having these delusional thoughts in the brain and hallucinations? And I'm sitting there and suddenly I remembered this uh, picture Bible I'd read when I was a child, which we had in the house. But I never really took much notice of it. I'd read it occasionally. And I would just suddenly I remembered the story of Jesus when he was tempted in the desert by the devil. And suddenly this, this thought came to me. I thought, hang on a minute. Is, is, is Jesus real? Is there a God? Is this is this whole UFO cult thing, because of my state of mind, is, is this something demonic, I think? Is it of the devil? You know, and I actually had these thoughts in yes. my brain, you know. And then I remembered someone had shared their faith with me when I was in the UFO cult. I remember I was walking around on my lunch break during work around some uh, some town in London. And this Christian stopped me, shared his faith with me. And uh, when, when I told him I was in a UFO cult, and I tried, I tried to convince him to get him into the UFO cult and told him that he was primitive, believing in God, and we've reached the new age now, and we were crazy by aliens. And, and I remember him looking at me, thinking, and he was almost laughed at me, thinking I was crazy. Believe, and I, I thought he was crazy, believing in God. And, I think he realized he realized he, he couldn't he couldn't touch me at that time. But I remember he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Look, Eddie, Jesus loves you, and walked off. And at the time I laughed at him for saying that to me. Yes, yes. Suddenly, oh wow. When, when, when I was in the mental hospital, suddenly I remembered this guy and those words that Jesus loved me. Yes. And it, it suddenly this came upon me, and then I had this amazing experience. I suddenly felt at that moment of getting these thoughts, I felt God's presence in the ward of the mental hospital. I said it was like a door had opened above me, and it's like Jesus yes. was standing there. I couldn't see this, but I just felt it. And yes. I just felt the presence of God, that peace, as though God was trying to reveal himself to me. And yes. I went to my bedside on my ward and got on my knees and said, Father, God forgive me. What have I done? You know. Wow. I got involved in this UFO culture. Just ask God to forgive me. And uh and it's so powerful I, when that happened, I'm sure, yes, because all yes. this time all this time you thought it was real. And then all yes. of a sudden, just this one moment, and I want to tell yes. people and, and remind the viewers that um sometimes when you share your faith with people and you don't think you're getting anywhere and you're like, Oh, yeah. it's a waste of time, especially yeah. with people that they mock and uh, don't worry about that yes. because guess what? You're planting seeds that one day might come and and uh, yes. God will bring that harvest. But I think it's great that that person shared that with you because that's what actually saved you uh, later. You it know, it was God that did it. It worked for me, yes. It worked, it worked for me, you. yes. 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 Anyway, I, I was going around the ward wondering what to do with myself because I was sort of, sort of stuck in this mental hospital and you're not sure what to do with yourself and on the notice board they had a they had a prayer meeting it said about a, a prayer meeting on a certain day and a certain time and suddenly I felt this this uh, leading or calling to I have to be there you know yes and anyway I was sectioned under the mental health act so I wasn't allowed to leave the mental hospital because because I, I was having suicidal thoughts so they wanted to want me to wander the streets of London being mentally yes. ill and I couldn't leave the wall. So I thought, how am I going to get to this meeting? You know, how am I going to get there? Yeah. So I uh, at the I tried I tried uh, sort of trying to uh, escape or leave the wall, but not not much success. And at the exact day and the exact time, I tried the back door of the mental hospital, and it opened. And every other time, it was locked. And I thought, wow! Oh, wow! And suddenly, suddenly, my faith in God suddenly was even more increased. You know, because I. I've done the handle. I tried it every other time. It was always not. But this time it opened and oh, the door opened and I went outside into a garden. I went up, the, found another building, went up the corridor and I found this hall, this little room where there were some three old ladies from a local church. And they said they would pray for me. And they gave me a cup of tea and biscuits. Oh. And it was a relief to get off the wall and just to be with like my first contact with Christians. And I explained to them what had happened. That was and, ordained. Uh, and, and then I left there and I was walking down the corridor just, just a few feet along 
and there was a beautiful chapel there, and a, a Christian chapel. And I just got on my knees there and prayed and asked God to heal me, to restore me. And I sort of gave my life to God. And it was just an amazing experience just to kneel before this, in this chapel and uh, find this peace in this mental hospital, you know. Yes. Anyway, uh, I'd, um, so I went back to the ward and lucky enough, no one even noticed I'd gone. I sneaked in when some cleaners were opening the front door and I sneaked back into the ward and no one even noticed I'd gone. <laughs> oh. And I was back in there. So I was back in there and, uh, but the funny thing was I, I had actually escaped before and uh, I, I sort of sneaked out the front door when someone came in or out, I'd run off. And um, I remember I, I walked all the way home, which is a few miles, and there was a police car waiting outside, would you believe? And they actually oh. drove me back. They actually waited for me, and they actually drove me back to the mental hospital because, under the laws of the land, it's quite serious if you escape from a mental hospital. You know. Yeah. Yes. I, oh, I, wow. So my daily uh, routine after that was one trying to escape from the mental hospital, <laughs> which I should have really been. And the other one was to get to the chapel to pray, and that, yeah. I used to just just to find that peace to get to the chapel and pray. Anyway, so I was in the mental hospital for about 28 days, and uh, my mum and dad used to visit me every day. They were very faithful. Yes. And I, uh, they, they said they would look after me at home because I was feeling a bit better. And I, I went home, and things weren't really well. I was still mentally ill. I still had this mental illness, and it was like it yeah. just wouldn't go away. And I started getting worse and having paranoid delusions again and having paranoid thoughts. And I actually thought the devil was going to come around and kill me and destroy me. I was getting these really demonic thoughts. Yes. And I went up to my bedroom and I opened the window and I was about to jump out. I, I wasn't sure what I was doing, if I was going to kill myself or was I was trying to escape from the devil that I thought was trying to kill me. Yeah. But lucky enough, my dad was downstairs and because it was winter in England at the time, and he heard me open the window, and he knew I wasn't well, he went, oh, that's strange, something's wrong. And he came running upstairs, and just as I was about to climb it out the window, he grabbed me and pulled me back in and saved my life. Oh, wow. And, uh, I almost committed suicide, jumped out the bedroom window. You know? Yes, thank God you didn't. Yes, I'm grateful yeah. to my father to this day for saving my life. Yes. Are you, were your parents believers? No, not really. My they weren't really born again at the time. No, my okay. mum. My mum went to a Catholic church. Yes. But grow, growing up in a Catholic school, so as a child, so she had some some knowledge of the Bible, but not she wasn't born again. My yes. dad went to a Church of England Sunday school as a child, okay. but never really was never really born again. So it's just like a Christian an English family that sort of knew a bit about Christianity, but never really took it on board with their faith to grow more. You know yes and yeah. but my dad my dad took an interest in the ufo cult actually so i had to when i came out of it i had to try and get him out of it again because he sort of he sort of got interested in it because i was interested in it you know yes and yes my dad I... found it fascinating yes yes so i managed to get my dad out of it when i came out of it and Thank uh, God. now my now my dad's born again he's a christian and and then my mum now she's born again my mum's a christian as well yes. that's wonderful thank Praise god yes 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 yeah yes. yeah god is very faithful let me yes anyway yeah. so i had to go back to the mental hospital because i tried to commit suicide and obviously i wasn't stable living at home yes. and uh mum and dad had to call the doctor and he said i have to go back to the mental hospital which was so sad to go back there and I went back and after 28 days, they, they sort of said, OK, we can go home again. They seem OK. And they let me go home. And over, over I'd say over six months of being at home, slowly I started recovering and feeling well yes. again. Okay. And getting back to normal, I started visiting churches, asking for prayer and help and deliverance. And yes. some churches were better than others. Some were very helpful. Some really didn't know what to do. They didn't yeah. really understand. But, uh, I noticed that some, uh, some, there. I noticed that there, there's a lot of uh, churches, uh, not at all to condemn any churches. Forgive me if I sound like that, but um, a lot of them doesn't believe in deliverance. You know that no, sometimes no, no. things need to be cast out. And yes, yes, I, I definitely am a believer in that. And um, I, I've, I've prayed with people and. You know, you just know it's real when you experience it, and and yeah. you help other people too. And 
I mean, I know you prayed, you was faithful right. and you prayed and people prayed with you and you finally got all the free, the freedom yes. that you needed, you know, and I praise God for that. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. that's right. Yeah. And anyway, so what happened next is quite a long, sort of like a long, quite a long story. But uh, but basically, I had, um, I suppose I got a bit confused with all the churches. I think I even got, because I've been to like a Mormon church, I think the Jehovah Witnesses and they give me the the Book of Mormon. They give me the Bible, and they give me the the, the tracts about the Jehovah Witnesses and and the Catholic Church and the Church of England, the Baptist Church, and all these different churches. And I got so confused of it. To be honest with you, I fell away from the Lord in a way because yeah, I, I just I couldn't I because of the uh, having breakdown, having met a severe mental breakdowns, I couldn't really understand Christianity and all these different churches and religion, and all these books. And really, I got I got lost by it all, and I decided I get I just got myself the latest home computer at the time and started hiding from what had happened from society and myself in a way. And I just sat at home, played computer games. <laughs> and I thought this yeah. was my life, really playing computer games. And it was like a hiding from reality, getting involved in in computer games to try and disguise and hide from what had happened to me in in yes. the so called world. And so I sort of got involved in that. People would copied computer games. So I would buy and sell computer games, copy them, and, and make a hobby of sort of selling them to people and copying them. And then people would offer me stolen goods and stolen cars. And I'm just about to sort of go into a downward spiral of crime to make money, to sort of get more yes. computer games. And I almost got involved in stolen cars, would you believe? Because these people offered me really cheap stolen cars. And I was even thinking of doing deals with some of my contacts to sell these stolen cars. And I could have ended yeah. up in a long time in prison for dealing in stolen cars. And, and then one day yeah. I met this Christian on the street and he was from the London Church of Christ. And I thought, well, I, I thought because of what had happened to me, I thought, well, I better go along to this prayer meeting. And I went along. And they realized that I had to give up my life of crime, copying computer games. They said it's against the Ten Commandments, so I should not steal them. They sort of shared the Bible with me. And uh, I started going to their church. And I, I had that for, at first, everything was fine. It was very good teaching, I thought, and everyone was friendly and wonderful. But then after being in the church for several months, I then found uh, this book of cults in the library after doing some research. And it mentioned that the London Church of Christ was actually a cult. They believed they were the only church. They believed you had to be baptized by them to be saved. And if you don't go to their church, then you go to hell. And basically, I suddenly thought, oh. wow, this can't be right. You know, what's going on yeah. here? They're in a book of cults. I've come out of this UFO cult. I've tried to find Christianity. I've got confused with all these different religions and so-called Christianity. And suddenly I find the London Church of Christ thinking, yes, this is a biblically based church. And now they're telling me that you have to, that they're the only church, and then I realised, no, this can't be right. You know, and I was getting confused, and I went to one of their meetings, and it's it just, I just, I didn't know what to do because I was very confused, and yeah. it's just like, it's, and they they told me that demons would come up. One, one, this lady came up to me in the church and said demons would come upon me because she had heard that I was thinking of leaving. And to say that to someone is is, is not right, you know. Yes, and, yes. And another person said, if you leave the church, then you'll go to hell. And I got very yeah. confused. So I just walked out of this prayer meeting. And on, on the way home, I started getting this mental illness was coming back in my mind because of these, I started getting delusions and paranoid thoughts. Yes. And I got back home and left the church. They knocked on my door a few times trying to get me to come back to this Christian cult. But in the end, my dad went down and said, oh, please don't come back. And they eventually didn't come back. And I left, managed to leave this Christian cult. And yeah. it was all very confusing for me. So I didn't know what church to go to because they're saying they're the only church. Every other church is wrong. And I literally just, a lone Christian at home, recovering from a mild breakdown after being in this cult. And I was praying and uh, reading the Bible for myself and trying to find biblical truths. Amen. Which was, yes. That's almost and, where you have to start from eight, from square one is just you do, in the you scriptures do. and see which church aligns yes. with the word yes. and, and everything. And it, it can be very frustrating. Anyway, what happened next was I, I was going to see my local GP because he wondered how I was getting on after suffering from breakdowns. And at this second 
secretary heard that I'd turned to Christ and she was a Christian and she invited me to a church called Kensington Temple in London. And they said there's lots of young people there and there's a young people's group, a young person's group. And so I went along and everything was fine there. But then um, after a while, the, 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 the Toronto blessing hit the church and they started uh, following the teachings of this word of faith ministry back then. Oh, yes. And they're all into like the financial financial blessings and financial and healing in finance and that you give mm. so much to them and God will bless you so much back. And yeah. a lot of it, I got so caught up in it that uh, I didn't realise that I was being deceived yet again by the word of faith movement. It wasn't biblical teaching, you know, they were very... Yeah. And uh, one day they had this big... Uh, this big um, uh, like a, an arena, the conference, and there were some guys outside saying, "Beware of false prophets." So I went up to them and said, "Look, what's wrong? What's wrong with these guys? They're teaching the Bible." And they mentioned uh, to to read a book called uh, Christ, uh, "Christianity in Crisis" by Hank Hanegraaff. So I went to my local bookshop the next day, got the book, read the book, and I thought, "Wow, this is amazing!" And I realised these people weren't teaching biblically. Uh, sound biblical doctrines it was more more about uh, making them rich so just like false, um, false prophets false teachers of, of the bible you know yes yes and i remember going went back to the meetings i wasn't sure and i just felt the holy spirit tell me not to go into the meeting tonight and i felt there was some guy shouting on on the on the stage asking for believers to give their money to him god mm. will bless you back and i just felt no this isn't right after reading this book and I felt, no, I shouldn't go to this meeting. So I decided to leave there. I left Kensington Temple. And uh, lucky, uh, well, not lucky, sorry, by the blessings of God, yes. I, uh, I, um, someone from the, from the Christian bookshop I had been to had put in an invitation to a, a new, new church in London called Calvary Chapel, which is originated from the States by a guy called Chuck Smith. And uh, they had started, that, and this, I think there's a new film out called Jesus Revolution. And that's all about the life story of Chuck Smith. It's in cinemas coming to the UK soon. I think it's been launched in the USA. Yes. And I got involved in the Calvary Chapel movement, and it was a wonderful biblical teaching. They teach the Bible very well. It goes verse by verse, chapter by chapter through the Bible. Yes. And I, was blessed, I was blessed through biblical teaching in London. And I oh, even went yeah. to a Bible college, a Calvary Chapel Bible college in York in the north of England. And I was there for two years and got to an associate's theology degree. In well, that's wonderful. I had a wonderful time there with other students and uh, other Christians. And we went yeah. on retreats and mission trips and we had wonderful Bible studies and yes. fellowship. And we wow. had a wonderful time there. And then after mm -hmm. two years, uh, the last two years I was there, I was there for about nine years, I just felt it was time to move on. And I felt God was leading me somewhere different. And I felt God was calling me back to London, back home to my hometown and to uh, continue in the faith here in London. And I moved back to London in 2010. And I went to a Calvary Chapel in London for a little while. And I also got involved with a church called Reality Church London. And that was from a, a church in, it was launched from a Reality Church in LA. There's a few in California. And that was a very good biblically based church. And then after a while of being there for several years, I felt God called me back to Calvary Chapel. And recently I've gone back to Calvary Chapel. Good. I've been blessed That's there good. with wonderful Bible teaching, really good, really good yeah. Bible teaching, sound doctrine. Yes. And I've been blessed for the past several years with good, sound biblical teaching. But, <laughs> wow. Yeah, this whole UFO thing is really taken off now. Um, even something that doesn't have to do with that particular movement. You know, mm. there's a lot of people in the new age, yes. and, you know, following these spirit guides. And, and I yep. find it interesting um, that like, say for instance, the ghost phenomena, there's always these light, these orbs, you know, that you see mm. these orbs, oh, yes. And stuff, yes, yes. you know, and then with the new age, you see these orbs and lights and the UFOs, mm. these unexplained lights in the sky. And they just, yeah. they go in very particular, uh, you know, uh, movements and things. That's not something mm. that's possible, you know, with the physical things that we do have aircraft. Um, but I think it's, it's really interesting when you think about like the name Lucifer is light bringer, light bearer, yes. you know, and then there's a lot of yes. other verses, you know, that, uh, 
God makes his angels flames of fire. And, you know, think about the, well, there's mm-hmm. also evil angels, you know, fallen angels yep. and things like that. But it's, it's yep. so interesting. And, and um, there's so much deception out there, you know, with this UFO phenomenon, yes. it really is. And uh, I think you're the first yeah. one I've ever met that was actually involved in a, an organized like cult, mm. you know? Yes. Um, yes. And uh, it, it just was very fascinating. Of course, not in a good way, but still, just to show yeah. the level of deception involved and, and how yes. these things can really happen to people. And uh, right. my heart goes out to you and, you know, everything you went through and I'm glad the yes, Lord thanks. brought you out of that. I really am. Um, right now. Um, I should have already done yes, it. But I'm going to just take a few minutes. We're going to take a break. I just wanted to do that for the list. we're back uh we just wanted to take that little break um but i was uh wanting to ask eddie here about these meetings and things and how big is this organization or this cult i should say yes. uh, it's it's so it's a lot of people involved in this well uh, this was a long time ago now so to be honest with you i, I <clears throat> when i turned to christianity i i lost track of the rallying movements and the, the cult That's so it. i did, did really keep in touch i tried to sort of avoid it and not really look it up or see how it was going yes because i didn't really want to be drawn back into it and i was more interested in my newfound faith in christ and in god and the bible i'll try to put all that behind me you know yes. but uh, at the time back in i think it was about 1990 i was involved in the cult uh, and in the uk it wasn't wasn't that big at the time there was only about 20 to 30 of us. It was very small in the UK, but this guy was from France. And in France at the time, it was quite big because it had been going for many years over there. And they had over a thousand members at this at this retreat. They probably got more members than that, but there was oh, about wow. a thousand people at the retreat yeah. at the UFO conference of the rallying movement in France. And it was like a thousand people there. And they're all believers in this, in this cult. That was in 1990. So obviously, I don't know what's happened to the cult since then. There's probably okay. some information on the internet. I'm not, I'm not, not even sure if it's still going. I'm sure it is. I, don't, I don't, really don't know the size of it, whether it's died out or whether it's still going. I'm not sure. I seen, though, I did look it up um, online on, in, under Wikipedia. <laughs> and yes. it did say, I think you had said you left the cult. What year was that? About just the end of 1990, 91. Oh, okay. And, and it says in 1998, they established what they call the Order of Angels. You know, how yes. interesting is that? It it's is. a it it. all-female group whose members are largely sequestered from wider society and tasked with training themselves to become the Elohim's consorts. And that, that was yes. very, I'm like, wow, the Order of Angels. <laughs> Yes. It's like they almost give themselves away, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think you once, once you're aware of it, you're, 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 uh, you've been yes. a Christian for many years, you're more aware of, of the deception. Yeah. <laughs> you spot the little things, you know, sometimes it's the verbiage or what they say. And uh, 
you yes. hear these words and it's like, right. mm, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that sounds new agey. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but with this, I, I just thought it was very interesting that they, they do that. And like I said, how, even with the like the spirit guides and things that mm -hmm. the new agers are communicating with, they always have their um, description of who Jesus is. And it's always not the one of the Bible. That's and right. isn't that interesting? They don't attack yes. Buddha. They don't right. attack Muhammad or any yes, of these, you know, or, uh, but they, it's always Jesus that they have a problem with and they want to uh, teach yes. us about <laughs> Even even the Christian cults like Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons, they all have their own version of Jesus, not the true biblical version. You know. That's right. And and another thing I also find interesting is like the ones like Joseph Smith and 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 all of those, they always had they get revelation from change. an angel. And that to me is a yeah. pretty much dead giveaway. Because it's like yes. the, a Bible should be sufficient enough. You know, he yes. God gave us the prophets and yes. he, you know, in our in the teachings there, we shouldn't yeah. need an angel to come and no. brainwash us and teach us something totally, you know, different yes. than what Say the Bible says or add to it, you know. That's right, yes. But I think that's when we get on dangerous uh ground there is when when you hear stuff like that, you know, do we need to yeah. hear that and want to see if you've been hearing anything in the news about ufos and things like that things that's going on at least few, it's getting a lot of attention because when you go on tv and i notice it yeah i know that you're probably noticing it too but it's like it's on a lot of channels now they always have these shows about ufos yeah. ghosts psychics and it's just yeah. the yeah. devil has his his gospel out there doesn't he it's just different you know he different does. voices and stuff and yes it was kind yes. of, it reminds me of what you were saying, how you was kind of being bombarded with all the different um, denominations and mm. people's interpretations of Christianity and what it is. And it, yes. it becomes confusing. And, yeah. it, you know, it's, it just people just need to pray. That's what I would say. Just pray for the yes. true God of the Bible to uh, reveal to you the way, the true way. Yes. And yes. he will do it. I don't care if he has to come okay. down and do it himself. He will yeah. make sure that you find out and you learn uh, the true, true way. Yes. Very yes. true. Yes. He's the one. He's the one. He's the, that's the one religion where that God actually answers prayers. You know, like he really answers mm. prayers and stuff. But uh, I, yes. I do but know as that he said, the ask answers to but, you. Yeah. 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 But Not he'll give us the truth. <laughs> right yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah. well it's been very good talking to you eddie and uh yes, and you. everything i tell you it's it's been very interesting and i'm so yes. glad that our dear friend laura maxwell you know gave me yeah. your information and and everything and i got to uh to talk with you and to let my <laughs> listeners hear you know what you had to say and kind yes, of well, be warned you. about these things thank you so much for having me on your show yes oh you're welcome most welcome i really mm -hmm. appreciate your time and everything i know our yeah. time difference is pretty big isn't it it's like what yes. four or five hours difference i was yes, like oh my goodness i had to think right? wait <laughs> 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 it's four o'clock here in, in the afternoon what time is it there yes what a past nine in the evening oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big world, but it's a small world too, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. Well, it is. God bless you, Eddie. And um, well, God would you bless mind you. praying? Would you mind praying no, uh, before we I'd go? Love to pray. Yes, I pray. You. Yes. Thank you. Ah, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for all the listeners. Thank you for Donna and for her show. And uh, may it go forth and I pray people will share it widely. And your word does not return void, Lord, but it will accomplish what you need it to accomplish according to your will, Lord Jesus. I pray, thank you for being able to share my testimony, Lord. Yes. That maybe it will benefit one person or many. I pray the listeners will hear and will grow in their knowledge and faith of Jesus Christ, because he is, he is the only one. He is the healer, the restorer, and he is the saviour the creator, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray now the peace of God and his understanding 
will come upon people now and their eyes will be open to the gospel of truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And um, I wanted to ask you, what is uh, how can people get a hold of you? Or didn't you say you have a blog? Yes, I have a website where you can read more of my testimony because obviously I probably I might have forgotten bits as well. So it's probably more on my testimony on the website. And that is www.theeddiebennettstory.blogspot.com. So that's the T H E Eddie E D D I E Bennett B E double N E double T dot blogspot B L O G S P O T dot com C O M. All right. And I will put that in the description, everyone, if you would like to go to, to see his blog, I, I suggest you do that. So anyway, thank you so much, Eddie. It's been a pleasure. God thank bless you. you. God bless you.